Capcom might as well remake everything that was already great to begin with. I can just picture the cringe right now. Resident Evil. Three make. Ah, but who the hell am I kidding? This game should probably be the new standard for remakes. Completely overhaul the engine, update for modern controls, make a few improvements, but retain the soul of what made the original great in the first place. You want to know how not to start a Resident Evil game? With Food ASMR, featuring a burger I'd expect to see at the Heart Attack Grill, which is unsurprisingly shut down. Look, just listen, alright? She got closer and I got a good look at her. You gotta see her eyes. Her nose. The recap radio would like to remind you that it is still capable of broadcasting in the aftermath of a viral outbreak. Until, of course, the plot calls for it to malfunction. No need to be alarmed, everything is perfectly fine. This zombie not only rises after getting hit with a semi, but the trucker slammed on the brakes while driving in the rain. How he didn't spin out of control and crash right there and then is something only the gaming elder gods could explain. And if you look closely, she doesn't even look all that banged up. Oh, Claire, I am utterly appalled at what they did to you. Made you look like a Mass Effect Andromeda default character. Still don't understand why they didn't just stick with your Dark Side Chronicles look. Not even the badass noir outfit could help out. Also, while I'm still on the subject of outfits, I know I'm really reaching for this one, but why couldn't they just give Claire her gloves for the classic outfit? I mean, they did so for the noir costume. It's really not that difficult. Details are important. <laughs> <laughs> well, look at that. Just when I was about to finish this damn video, they go ahead and release the 1998 original costumes. I retract my previous statement. This is quite the compromise I can make. Speaking of noir, Resident Evil 2 noir is something that I never knew I wanted, but damn does it look fantastic. I am definitely going to go back to replay the game in this mode. And if you have it, give it a try. Why does everyone think I'm going to get in trouble? Allison Court isn't voicing Claire Redfield. Look, I can deal with the fact that there's no fixed camera angles and tank controls. I've accepted that. But at least make the damn voices somewhat memorable so that I'm not face palming every time they open their damn mouths. Why does everyone think I'm going to get in trouble? I don't know, Claire. You tell me. You're the one packing heat, which you will not logically get from the glove compartment of a police car. Now this is one retcon that never made any sense and is stupid at a high degree. Yes, we are home to a big bad corporation that caused a major outbreak and already screwed up once before at a mansion. No way could this ever come back to incriminate us. This little section here is clear. However, in just a few moments, a zombie will appear in it. As it seems to be the case with any work of fiction involving zombies, it's not complete without some teleporting dead. <laughs> See, it was somewhat charming in the original when Claire was befuddled when she interrupted a zombie feast. Not so much here. You clearly saw someone else got chomped on before entering here. This is clearly not normal human behavior. You know what's funny? You can empty Leon's entire clip while he's in the convenience store, but once he escapes, he'll still have one bullet left to save Claire. Gotta love the power of that cutscene magic. Yeah, that headshot was a random chance. Zombies usually won't go down with one headshot in-game. There's that teleporting dead again. I see that it's still convenient that Leon and Claire can just drive into town without passing through a blockade. Or did it collapse on the same day that they arrived in this one as well? What if we're the only ones? What if there's no survivors? No, there's survivors. It's a big city. Yes, one that strangely gets bigger with each interpretation, which would actually make sense if we lived in an alternate timeline where Raccoon City wasn't overrun by the undead. I cannot be mad at all that Claire gets her revolver without having to obtain a special key in Scenario B. Getting to play as Red Dead Redfield makes me love Claire even more than I already do. David! You do know you can just go through the front door, right? Go to the front gate, pop some zombies, clear the way, and escape. There's no reason for you to escape through this parking lot. What's worse is that the game tries to cover its ass by blocking off the front door later on, as if there wasn't already an outbreak before Leon and Claire arrived, and as if the close-to-death Marvin managed to create the blockade all by himself. The hallway this officer is in leads directly down to the basement parking garage. Yeah, it's locked, but you'd be hard-pressed to convince me these officers don't know the layout of their own damn police station. And that's coming from me. Just like it's original, this game couldn't resist having the rule of three cliche. Dumb limitations continue to be one of the great enemies of Resident Evil protagonists. Mr. X looks like Nick Valentine got juiced up on some of those delicious T-Virus steroids. This door is heavily boarded up, yet zombies will bust through it in just a few moments. But the little boards you pick up throughout the game that aren't so hefty will do the trick. I'm just gonna say this right now, the body physics and gore in this game are impeccable. Um, a new standard has been achieved in horror games, and every other developer from here on out is gonna have a lot to measure up to. Watch out! 
I see that my boy Marvin is a big fan of the saving the hero in the nick of time cliche. Which is odd since I explored the entire lobby beforehand and he was nowhere to be found. I'm sure you did what you could, Leon. Does anyone know what started this? Really? Just like that, huh? Leon just automatically transitions into his police uniform when there are no lockers around and all the doors are locked with a spade key? Actually made more sense in Leon's scenario B where he did get his uniform in a locker. So nobody knows what caused this? There's a lot of theories, but all I know for sure is that this place is crawling with zombies. Hey Marvin, how come you never mentioned the mansion incident like you did in the original? It's not like you had STARS members conducting an investigation on it or anything. You'll probably need this. Boy, does this scene look even more ridiculous if you wear the original costume, cause Claire couldn't possibly use that knife attached to her vest. <laughs> the most pathetic jump scare imaginable. So, we're not gonna get any context for this scene this time, huh? No police officer being overrun by zombies and accidentally shooting the pilot that causes them to crash? Just a random occurrence, huh? I take it you don't have the key. No, I don't. It's good to see your face, though. How are you holding up? You know, Claire, you can drink that rainwater if you're feeling that thirsty. You find your brother? I did actually, he's- No, Claire. You found information that Chris is in Europe. That's not the same thing as actually finding him. I tried, Leon. But I couldn't stop it. Marvin, you might as well just say, Sorry, Leon, I am the black guy in this horror story, therefore I am obligated to die. We can't let this thing spread. We can't let this thing spread, even though the entire city is already screwed and infested with zombies, making my entire statement pointless. So one really cool thing about this game is the defense items that were introduced in Resident Evil 1 Remake return. And better yet, the combat knives you obtain actually have weapon degradation, forcing you to carefully strategize, ultimately bringing us back to our survival horror roots. Ah, don't I just love it when everything comes full circle. So, when starting scenario A, you find your way to the police station, try to help a police officer, watch him die, get saved by Marvin, search for the spade key, hear their helicopter crash, and end up meeting Leon or Claire outside. When you start scenario B, you automatically end up at the police station, hear the helicopter crash, and meet up with Leon or Claire. That is quite the time jump, even if both of these scenarios aren't happening simultaneously. You need help. Why? He's right behind you. Sherry says this before Birkin actually appears behind Claire. Behold, ladies and gentlemen, both Claire and Leon get to fight Birkin at this stage in the game, even though one of them should have already dealt with him in scenario A. So where's your dad? He, um, worked with my mom, but he's gone. Wow. Both of my parents are gone. It's just me and my brother. Aw, how adorable. They're essentially bonding over the dead parent cliche. Tie. Okay then. You tie her up now or she dies. Sherry, come here. What are you gonna do to her? None of your fucking business. So you know all that subtle creepiness Chief Irons had in the original? <laughs> yep, let's just completely eliminate it while doubling his wickedness and douchebaggery. That'll make him a more compelling villain. Sherry loses the pendant even though it was wrapped around her neck. And somehow Chief Irons didn't notice it. I see that Ada is also a fan of the saving the hero in the nick of time cliche. Ada wears sunglasses at night. Lower it. Yep, just like I had thought. Ada lost a lot of her seduction and charm once Sally Cahill left. Lower it. FBI. It's always super easy to create a fake FBI badge in fiction. FBI, huh? What's going on here? Sorry. That information's classified. Sure. All of Raccoon City has fallen into chaos and overrun with zombies. I'm sure you'll be able to keep that information classified for long, especially when you reveal Ben was your informant in just a few minutes. Just like in the original game, Leon somehow reaches Ben before Ada, even though Ada went before him. Irons. You mean Chief Irons. Is he still around? Who cares? He's the bastard that locked me in here. I'm sure he had a good reason. He did. I was about to blow the whistle on his dirty ass. If you were going to blow the whistle on him, why did he leave you with the parking permit and kept you alive? He's already shown he's not above murder, and leaving you with the only way to escape, regardless of locking you in a cell, is quite the oversight. I was about to blow the whistle on his dirty ass. Yeah, you might want to rephrase your words there, Ben. If you play Claire A, Leon B, the kennel will be destroyed out of order. It'll be ravaged by liquors when you first go through it, and then be perfectly fine the second time you go through it. Guess they didn't take into consideration those of us who weren't going to be suckered by 
advertising. You want to know what made Mr. X so terrifying in the original? That he only showed up in one scenario. Kind of diminishes the scare factor when he shows up in both scenarios in this game, often in the same spots. <laughs> That worked. You said it, Claire. You must be a fan of gaming sins. Resident Evil continues its mannequin fetish. Remake of Legendary Video Game just had to implement Bioshock puzzles. So you'd probably expect me to sin the game for being able to wombo combo you into death. It's actually quite humorous. It's exactly what I would expect to see in a situation like this. So good on Capcom for including it. So you know one of the only bad parts of the original Resident Evil 2? Yeah, let's make that segment longer and put a forced stealth segment in it as well. I don't know what's more insulting, Chief Irons locking up Sherry in a room with an easily accessible hole in the wall only blocked off by duct tape and cardboard, or Chief Irons locking up Sherry in a room where she can solve a puzzle that gives her scissors to access said hole in the wall only blocked off by duct tape and cardboard. It's a sin either way. Apparently every villain in horror stories loves to listen to classical music. Apparently the G-Virus also grants the gift of teleportation, seeing as how Birkin appears out of nowhere without making any sound or breaking through any doors. Remake of classic video game rips off the impregnation scenario from Alien. Where are you? The orphanage. The orphanage? Where is that? In the neighborhood. You'll find it. You know, if you want someone to meet with you, you might want to give them specific directions. Claire's not even from this town. This is getting old. Saving your ass that's twice. Says the woman who has basically been camping out here waiting for this incident to occur. I mean, you do have your own investigation to conduct. And you'll even say in a few moments that Ben's recording did not include crucial information for you. Nothing dies down here. Except for that Cerberus you killed when saving Leon and... Ben, whose dead body you saw firsthand. Even in a remake of Resident Evil 2, they somehow managed to slip in a forced walkie-talkie segment. Well, what exactly are you looking for? More info on the people responsible for this mess. Not exactly the best lie to make when you end up explaining what happened in just a few minutes. Heard of the Umbrella Corporation? They're a pharmaceutical company secretly making bioweapons. They have a virus. It turns people into indestructible monsters. What about you? Trying to save the world? Yeah, well, someone's got to get word to the authorities. We need reinforcements to save this city. Leon, take a good look around you. The city is already decimated. You can only be naive for so long before you start looking ridiculous. Road's out. Did you really need to go to the edge of the gap to confirm that? So instead of Kendo being a creepy pervert like he was in the original, they decided to make him a grieving father. Nice try, but I know a poor attempt to get a cheap emotional reaction when I spot it. Especially considering we already have a child in Sherry that I'm already invested in saving. Well, it's not a modern Resident Evil game unless Leon is running away from something while facing the camera. Come on, Leon, wave that Wiimote. Chew on that, you overgrown son of a bitch. Forgive him. It's still very early in his one-liner career. That little walkway Ada was at does not lead to the position where she ends up. Well, look at that. Of all games out there, this is the one where the Mass Effect elevator decided to make an appearance. Stop! Ada! <laughs> Annette couldn't hit Ada with those first three shots, but she sure could hit Leon with that fourth one. And she got even more sloppy in the remake. I'm right outside the facility, in pursuit of a net. There is no reason why we shouldn't be able to hear the other person on the radio. Otherwise, Ada shouldn't even be able to get a signal this deep underground. Yeah, this technology is a little too advanced for 1998. Besides, seems like every AAA game these days needs to have some sort of see-through line-of-sight hacking mechanic. So as we'll find out, the green ID wristband is for visitors and basically acts as a guest pass for touring Umbrella Laboratories. Why Umbrella would issue guest passes when they've clearly been conducting illegal experiments in said laboratories is anyone's guess. You don't cooperate. 
I'll get a sample from the nest. But that's your plan anyway. No use in threatening her when she's already tried to kill you twice. You know, with that wound and being trapped in a sewer, it's a wonder how Ada doesn't naturally get infected. The front door to the orphanage is open, even though it was chained up when Sherry attempted to escape. I'm not gonna lie, seeing Mr. X get wrecked by Birkin is one of the most badass moments of the entire game. So much so that I'll take off a few sins. First person point of view at critical plot moments. I'm surprised Annette is able to keep her balance with her heels standing over that grate. Want to know how brain dead the creators of the G virus are? They believe that G will surpass humans, yet in the same document they claim subjects infected with the G virus will begin to lose intelligence immediately and will only be driven by the instinct to survive and reproduce. Intelligence being the whole reason why you were able to create the virus in the first place, while surviving and reproducing are actions humans naturally do already. Should have just left out those pages and skip to the part where G-Virus subjects will be impervious to traditional forms of firepower. That way you don't automatically look like a Looney Tunes villain. So G will also seek out those who are closely related DNA-wise and most likely implant an embryo in its biological children. So it's an incest virus. Japan, I know your culture is ahead of the curb most of the time, but you might want to tone it down in this instance. Sherry, I told you I cannot leave huh? here until my work is done. What you say. Annette is talking to Sherry who is trapped in a sewage disposal. So nobody's gonna question why there's a comm system installed in a sewage disposal? They tried to cover their bases by using a digital video cassette, but GoPros didn't exist back in 1998. Both Leon and Claire have the misfortune of solving the same damn chess puzzle. And they both get to fight Birkin in the sewer, despite the fact that there should already be a destroyed ceiling in the power room during scenario B. Sherry ends up having a G-Virus embryo implanted in her, and Annette ends up blocking her in the sewage disposal disposal. Yet she won't insist on curing Sherry until Claire gets involved, even though she already had the means to do so. <laughs> I see they missed modeling the currently equipped outfit in the monitor screen. Annette is speaking to Claire and Sherry from her lab, which is at Nest. Yet she somehow got to the lab when the only way to get there is through the tram, and the tram is still at the sewers. Calling it a chemical flamethrower is a bit of a redundancy, don't you think? As opposed to an organic flamethrower? Or a natural flamethrower? We have to get to the Nest. Nest? Umbrella's lab, right beneath us. Not to be too nitpicky, but the tram that leads to the lab travels down diagonally. The lab is not directly beneath you. Ah, so Ada's the one who gets to put on the moves this time. Wow, you guys are really gonna make me do this, huh? Okay, you asked for it. Be gone! Ah! I don't know what I'd do without you. Are you kidding me? You were doing just fine without me, so I came along and got you all sorts of trouble. You must have missed the part where Sherry explained the reason why she went to the police station in the first place was because she was scared, she called the police as well as her mother, and nobody answered. She would have been in trouble regardless of your involvement. I know it seems like your mom doesn't care, but... Yes, Claire, that is exactly the case. Annette made up any excuse she could as to why Sherry went to the police station and didn't even bother to treat her until you pleaded with her. There's gotta be something here. Antiviral agent. That's it. How convenient that the computer is on the precise page Claire needs that provides crucial information. Man, even in zombie form, people are desperate to eat ass. Ivy monsters have basically been reduced to bootleg regenerators. Just couldn't resist putting in an Arkham puzzle, could you game? I know I should have mentioned this already, but my goodness, the spark shot is so much better in this game than it was in the original. Gotta give props where they're due. Kind of strange how you have Umbrella employees panicking over how to stop Plant 43, yet there's a solution and formula to create herbicide that stops Plant 43. Meaning they had already taken the necessary precautions, but didn't act on them. Dr. Birkin, you'll come along with us quietly. You think I didn't know you were coming? I mean, clearly not. Otherwise you would have been more prepared. That or you wouldn't have been caught in the first place. Stop! Hold your fire! What the fuck were you thinking? Our orders were to bring him in alive! Way to ruin Hunk's character, you bastards. What makes him so badass is that he always keeps his cool. He's calm, cold, collective, and callous. He doesn't lash out at his subordinates regardless of their incompetence. Also, his orders were not to bring Birkin back alive. The order was to obtain the G-Virus, at any cost. Why they changed it to apprehending Birkin being the primary objective is eye-rolling to say the least. Now this is a sin of convenience if I ever saw one. Sherry's pendant is the key that accesses the storage containing the antivirus, meaning Annette would have never been able to treat Sherry if Claire didn't stay. And it makes even less sense for Leon. 
town, where the storage is already opened, despite him not having a pendant and this entire west area being locked off until now. Um, Annette? You were not injured the last time Claire saw you. Game really needs to make up its damn mind. You can't have A and B scenario canon while at the same time making certain situations inconsistent, like having Claire and Leon engage in the same Burke and Boss fight at this stage in the game. What about Sherry? How could you just leave her all alone while Raccoon City burned to hell? I couldn't let my daughter grow up in a world with a G virus in it. Then why the hell did you allow your husband to create it in the first place? Your umbrella too. You're telling me you weren't involved in this. Yes. But we never meant for this to happen. I believe what you meant to say was, we never meant to cause a massive outbreak that ended up killing many innocent people. Nobody creates a mutagenic virus with good intentions. Wouldn't be a modern Resident Evil game without a boss that has obvious weak spots. The target has been neutralized. After this boss battle with Birkin, the computer says, target neutralized. And that doesn't make any sense. This is a laboratory conducting experiments with viruses, not a military mission or covert government operation. Well, isn't that perplexing? The computer can detect who is unauthorized to remove the virus, but not who is unauthorized to access the storage containing the virus in the first place. What does that mean? It's a self-destruct code. <laughs> in case the G virus leaves the building. Well, the city is already devastated because of the viral outbreak, so. A little late for that procedure. So all this time, Ada could just use the EMF visualizer to hack through security clearance. So what the hell was the point of her obtaining the ID wristband in the incinerator? Why couldn't you just hand over the sample? Because I realized, as much as I wanted to trust you, I didn't. Hey morons, the self-destruct system has been activated. It would be best for you to evacuate immediately. Annette was able to shoot Ada even though Leon was directly in front of her when she took the shot. Ada falling to the depths is head scratching to say the least. Those of us who have played the original know this is complete bullshit. The only way she could have survived is if she used her trustworthy grappling hook, which makes me wonder why she never used it when we were controlling her. And she would have had to have pulled that off and escape with an injured shoulder and leg. Leon was somehow able to communicate with Claire even though these monitors were turned off. The lever was just to activate the train, not the comms. Oh. I'm not gonna lie, as much as I love the original soundtrack, Mr. X's new theme is pretty metal. Worthy of a sin reduction. You want to know why this sequence made more sense in the original? Because Ada could actually see Leon. There's no way she could have spotted him from this distance and location. Not sure why you still have that ID wristband, Leon. I put it away in the item box. Yes, Birkin. Even in a remake, you remain a grotesque, terrifying, yet awesome final boss battle. It's no surprise you have never been topped. Come on! You took multiple anti-tank missiles to the eye, but a quick stab is what stuns you for the final blow. This trucker ends up flipping off Leon. Whatever metaphor or twisted sense of irony they were going for just went right over my head. Mainly because the trucker is heading into a city overrun with zombies. Oh, that makes it even dumber. Hey, there was live another day. Wow, the radio must be broadcasting from Pun City, the place that is oblivious to the massive viral outbreak that occurred. So, is it over? I don't know. But if it's not, we'll stop it. Whatever it takes. Yeah, you're damn right we will. As long as we stick together, we'll be fine. The real sin here is that this is not how things end up. Unless Capcom pulls a flashpoint and remakes every Resident Evil game in an alternate universe where Claire and Leon do end up partners, they need to piss off with this false hope. Hey, you guys can adopt me! Sherry seems way too happy for a child who just had both of her parents killed and barely made it out of this ordeal alive. Riding, or in this case walking off into the sunrise cliché. Why did he buy me?